Hey guys, it's Monsky here, and today we're back in Star Citizen, and I'm going to talk about REC, or REC, or Rental Equipment Credits. Now this is something that CIG has been talking about doing for a very long time now. I remember back in the days of Wingman's Hangar, and uh, which, you know, probably over a year ago even, um, the idea of earning some sort of uh, credits in Arena Commander in order to unlock uh, items or you know weapons, ships, whatever. And that's basically what REC is. But it's actually a fairly complex system, at least according to its first de uh, design brief that was put out a couple of weeks ago. There's also a pretty good video uh, released by COG on their YouTube channel that talks about it in a bit of depth. So I'll link to both of those in the video description. Um, but yeah, so let's kind of dive into this and we'll kind of explain how it works. So starting in update 1.1, which I'm not sure when that's planned on being released, but that's when they're talking about releasing REC, um, basically you'll be able to earn these credits. Now according to their initial design document, you'll only be able to earn them or earn REC in the online multiplayer modes. However, according to the video, um, they are talking or they are trying to kind of planning out out ways to earn wreck in say Vandal Swarm and the other single player game modes. So hopefully you will be able to earn this in single player because having it uh, limited to online only would not be very good I believe, especially because the vast majority of players, according to CIG's own stats, I think they said something like 80% of players are only playing single player at the moment. So I think they really do need a way to earn these credits in single player. Anyway, so the way the credits will work is you will earn them and you will buy them or you will spend them on items in the Voyager Direct Store or on ship unlocks. Apparently you'll have a few different ways of spending the credits. Um, let me see, let me scroll down. So they, they say that you'll be able to do it from Voyager Direct, the Moby Glass or the Sim Pod. The Sim Pod being Arena Commander itself. Uh, Moby Glass we don't really have yet so maybe they're planning on implementing that or maybe they're just uh, you know looking to the future in terms of that but anyway so there will be a few different ways of spending things in game basically I guess but uh, the idea is that to unlock something the rec cost will basically be about 10% of the full UEC cost so for something like let's use one of their examples the Hornet F7C which costs 140,000 UEC uh, that would cost 14,000 rec. Now it's important to note here that these are, they're not final figures, right? If it turns out that 14,000 is too high, then presumably they'll change that. Or if it's too low, again, they'll probably change it, right? They're not just going to say, well, you know, this is 10% and it's going to be 10% forever. They want the system to actually work and for the players to use it. So, you know, these numbers, they're not set in stone. So uh, remember this, this hasn't even come out yet. This is just planning at the moment. Uh, so as, as with anything with Star Citizen when it's first released, it is a first pass and they do go over it and look at it again and fix it up. So a little disclaimer there, I guess. But anyway, so we've got that 14,000 rec cost. Now, again, the estimated numbers is that a player will earn around 1,800 rec per hour. So to unlock that F7C would take you about, well, where's the number? Uh, 7.7 .7 hours, that's what they say. Now that's 7.0 hours for a full week, because the way the rec works is that when you when you rent something, you rent it for one week, and that's basically 7 24-hour blocks. And that's actually a really good way of doing it, because that means when you start your rental, uh, basically when you first use that, have, uh, that Hornet in-game, you start ticking down a 24-hour timer instead of a, a full week's timer, right? So that means you can you can use it for your 24 hours, but then you can go off for a couple of weeks doing something else, come back, and you'll still have six blocks of 24 hours left. That's the way I understand that it works, and that's actually really good. That means that you don't have to worry about, say, you know, if you are if you unlock it one day and you get really busy at work or whatever, you can come back and you'll still have that uh, rental time remaining. It won't have all burned away while you were off not even playing the game. So that's that's pretty cool. You can also uh, renew the rental. I guess if you rent it again before your rental expires or something like that, and there'll be a 20% discount. So it'll be a bit cheaper. Uh, basically, once you've already rented something, it'll take you less time to maintain that. Uh, is the idea behind that so that's pretty cool and again I mean seven hours or eight hours whatever that is seems like a fairly long amount of time just to uh, you know unlock one ship but when you think about it seven hours of gameplay or whatever to have it for 
a full week or for six or seven lots of 24 hours however you want to consider it for me that's that's reasonable uh, but again we'll have to wait and see how it actually goes in the real world and you know once we've got it in our hands uh, to know if that's really a good number or not but the other good thing is that you'll be able to use all of this in whatever game modes that you want basically so you can unlock that f7c and you can use it in racing or you can use it in free flight or you know whatever and you'll be able to use it in single player as well as multiplayer once you've got it unlocked so that's that's pretty good um but yeah so in and i should mention as well that this is arena commander only so this stuff will not be used in the persistent universe so you don't have to worry about people grinding out hundreds of hours in arena commander and having a massive advantage in the persistent universe because that's not how it's going to work of course, if they want to spend thousands of real-world dollars, then that's a different story. But uh, let's let's not get into that right now. But um, so I think this is a pretty good uh, like a pretty good thing that they're doing. Uh, I think it's definitely needed because the fact is, right now, everything in the Voyager Direct Store is locked behind a paywall, and it's a pretty expensive paywall at times. You're talking what, like ten dollars for missiles? In fact, it's more than ten dollars, I think. So the stuff in the Voyager Direct Store is actually stupidly expensive in my opinion and it's it's really good that there is a way now or there will be a way of unlocking that just with gameplay and not having to spend real money on it i think it's something that the game desperately needs uh and it's just a really good thing that they're doing this um so yeah i think it's pretty good i mean you can definitely make the argument that this is a far more complex system than is really needed i mean you, for, uh, they could just add like a hundred thousand credits to everybody's account or something that can only be used in arena commander or i don't know i mean it's it's always it's easy to just say oh well they can just do this or they can just do that uh putting it into practice is obviously a fair bit harder so you know like i said th this seems like a fairly complex system given that it's just it's effectively just for a pre-alpha or for an alpha uh, testing environment which is what arena commander really is but at the same time arena commander is going to grow to become the full game that's kind of the idea of this so i don't know it uh it's pro it may be too complex it may be exactly what we need uh, it's, it's kind of hard to say until we've got it uh ourselves to play around with but i think it's pretty cool um it's definitely i'm definitely excited for it i mean as i was saying i, I find that the voyager direct stuff is far more expensive than it needs to be uh and it's really a barrier to entry i think especially like we've got things like there was an update uh a few weeks back i think 1.02 which introduced different types of shields and different mechanics for that sort of thing but there was no way of testing that without buying those shields so you know personally i didn't test it at all because i'm not going to spend that's that amount of money on the voyager direct store uh at this point in the game and i know that i'm not the only person who feels that way so being able to unlock those shields and test it that way just through gameplay i think is really good um but yeah so that's that's basically the idea behind rec though and i think that it is pretty cool there's going to be some bugs to work out and there's probably some kinks in the system and that sort of thing when it's first released uh i think we'll have to expect that but you know that's the way that development works that's the way that alpha stuff works basically and that's that's the price you pay for seeing development when it's at this stage so personally not really a big deal for me like that, that doesn't bother me too much and i think this really uh it's it's kind of huge it's they have talked about future proofing it as well so you know it's not just going to be weapons and stuff there might be some skins available in the future or there might be um you know different things like that assuming the system works out and takes off but yeah so in my opinion as i've already said a few times i think I'm pretty excited for this i think it's uh, i think it's a good thing but i mean let me know what you guys think do you think this is a good idea or a really bad idea or you know you're totally against it or you're all for it uh i am interested in seeing what other people think about this besides just myself so you know let me know but uh yeah so i think i'll end this one here so until next time i've been Moscow. hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching